Howdy folks, Nathan here with Is It Worth The Hype? Something where they drag me out, don't let me look behind me, and then they bring a vehicle that I was not expecting. And one of the things I am expecting today, because it's Andre, I hear something pulling up, but I don't hear a lot of noise, so it Might be a Rivian, but now I hear an engine. Oh, it's not a Rivian. I thought, because that's coming out, that it would be. Nope, it's a Nissan Frontier. It's not just any Nissan Frontier. This is the all new 2022 Nissan Frontier. And the reason why this video is titled, is it worth the hype? Is because last time there was a brand new Frontier, it was about 17 years ago. Yeah, I mean, they've done little things since then, little tricks and changes, but essentially that platform, four liter engine, all that stuff for years and years and years and years. I really like the front end. So this is like basically your first time in the flesh, right? Digging into this truck. Yeah, everybody else got a chance to touch this thing but me. And I was ticked because, you know, I'm not a Nissan fanboy, but I've owned Nissan products and I like, and I've always liked the Frontier. And then I saw this one and everybody's had the green one, right? But I like it, uh, I like the green. But there's immediately there's a problem. What? This is not functional. Okay, okay, it's stylistic. But dude, what do you think about the styling? If you kind of step back, um, do you like it? Does it look like a Nissan to you? Does it look like something else? I wish that the Titan looked like this. Mm. That's that's how much I like this design. Um, there are some guys who are like, oh, it totally is a Tacoma, bro. No, it's really not. From the front end, it's definitely not. From the rear, it's not, I'm sure. I've seen a million pictures of this thing. Yeah, okay, they look similar with the cab, but what can you do to make a cab look different? What I really like, it, yep, and this has it, I just like the fact that they, the way they shaped this fender, they brought it out a little bit and they made it look a little bit more pronounced, a little bit more muscular without being stupid about it. So I, I really like the profile of this vehicle when you're up close. When you're far back and you know, come on back and look, I can see why some people are like, oh God, it's so much like a Tacoma. Because if you look at the rear door design and the way it's shaped, I get that. I can see why people would say, okay, it kind of sort of looks like it. But everything else, the front and the rear, the way they bulge. Look at this. Look at this. I love this. Ba bang It's got kind of a traditional look, you know, a, kind of a mid-size off-road look, especially in the rear here. Well, yeah, and this is the Pro 4X version. So this is off-road. So it's got the beefed up shocks, and I'm sure you know all about them. Yeah. Um, Milsteins, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is a Bilstein tr uh, truck. Um, so this is a crew cab. It also comes, you know, you can get the 2022 truck as a king cab, which is a shorter cab with the longer bed. Right. Right. So you can get a six foot bed. This is a five footer. Um, you can also get a crew cab SV truck, not a Pro 4X, but an SV with a six foot bed. But this is a, this is the most offered worthy option they have. Yeah, so this is the one that we would be most interested in, obviously, because we do a lot of off-roading. Ooh, what we got here? How many volts? Uh, well, this is 110 volt or 120 volt, 400 watts. So this is very standard. Uh, this is also a bed line bed. Um, you might be surprised about the payload number, but mm. here's what Nissan did. They took the frame, mostly unchanged from the previous generation. They changed the suspension quite a bit. Uh, Bilstein shocks, of course, on this one. Um, then, of course, they gave it a brand new engine. What, 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 what what's going on? Where's the tow hitch? Uh, There's no freaking tow hitch? Are uh, you kidding me? I'm, we can't test this thing on the Ike. I'm, I'm not kidding you. So, so, a couple things. First of all, this is a pre-production truck. This all is right. very early, early built. Um, also, there was a shortage, Nathan. There was a shortage, not just chips, not just chips, but shortage of hitches. Okay. Then take it off a Titan and slam it on here. Come on. So, uh, so let's go over on the other side. I, I, I want to kind of uh, tell you about some of the payloads. It looks and so cool. Of... I'd love to see this thing towing. So, uh, uh, yes. So we cannot tow with this one. We will take it off road because we do have it for a few days. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we also have a video on TFL truck uh, already where we try to load a bunch of different things in the bed, see what fits, see what doesn't fit. This truck can tow about 6,720 pounds if it had a hitch. That's not as high as some of the competitors. No, it's not as, quite as high because the Ford Ranger can tow about 7,500 right. pounds. Uh, the Gladiator can, can tow about 7,600 pounds and change in four-wheel drive configuration. Diesel Colorado can tow more. 
Yeah, I'm not even talking about these. I'm just talking about gas ones. All right, what about the, well, okay, we know it's off-road, so it, it, with an off-road package, all trucks lose payload capacity. And it's also fully optioned. Okay. I'll show you in the So it's interior. like the heaviest version of well, this, this pretty much. Well, this is the most luxurious, the heaviest, the coolest in many ways. Uh, well, I'll, I'll show you. Well, yeah, that's subjective, but how much can it hold in the back here? Uh, payload is 1,020. That's not good. Alex, how much is your motorcycle while you're a heaviest one? About 500 pounds. 500 pounds. So we could probably get his bike in here, some helmets and some gas. And two of us. And two of us, and that's about it. Yeah. That's, so, I mean, it's okay, it, it, but it's, it could be better. So, yeah, so you haven't driven it yet, right? No. So let me show you the engine, and then we can go um, for a drive, and I'll show you the beautiful interior that they did. Hey, can you show me how the backseat works? So it looks like it folds. Yes, so by the way, um, and Titan did this first, uh, they have the uh, Fender audio system, and because it was cool, and it's a very nice system, they put the Fender audio system inside of the Frontier as well. This is a, basically a subwoofer right here. It takes a little bit of space. Let me walk around and show you on the other is, side. Is there cargo room on the other side then? Uh, yes, um, there's also this. You can do this. Let me show you on the other side. So same thing. But look, Nathan, they gave us a first aid kit and also an emergency recovery kit right there. Yeah, that's it's cool. I'd rather have a tow hitch. Um, but okay, that's I, I like that stuff too. I mean, I know you guys are like, yeah, it's a gimmick. Look, everybody does it. But uh, <laughs> hey, what about back there? Is, it, is there a vent, air conditioning vent? Uh, no. No bueno. Okay, no. what else? But there is also a 400 watt outlet right there. Okay. There's USB and USB-C. Um, 400 watt is good. So that means you would have no problem hooking up a computer or a blender. Uh, yeah, everybody needs a blender. Well, yeah. Um, all right. So let me pop the hood. Uh, or oh, can you pop the hood? Yeah, I'll pop the hood. I'll pop the hood. I'm guessing it's roughly in the same spot as the old uh, Nissan Frontier. And I'm correct. Aha. So by the way, this color is called Tactical Green. I really like it. I like green vehicles and I never get a chance to own them. But look at this. There's no prop stick. Is it heavy? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's relatively, well, I don't know how much it weighs because it's assisted with uh, these gas uh, So that's struts. some highfalutin stuff right there. That is a high-end feature. Yes. So this is a new engine, but it's not all new, right? Well, because it's, this is the same engine that was in the one we had last year, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So what they did is actually in the previous version of the truck, they introduced this engine in a uh, nine-speed automatic before. Yeah. But they've removed the four-cylinder. They've removed the manual transmission. This is basically the only power option currently available. It's a 3.8 liter V6, 310 horsepower is class leading. Class leading for a V6 uh, natural aspirator. Yeah, well, yeah, actually yeah. any midsize truck. But the torque, of course, is not class leading because okay. it's not a diesel, right? All right. 281 pound feet of torque. Well, that's less than Ford. Yes, uh, Ford turbocharged engine is uh, 310 okay. pound feet of torque. Nine speed auto which is a new transmission also shared largely with, with the Titan. Titan yeah. Right, yeah. So, uh, all right. Now, what I know from the past is that this is a pretty smooth powertrain. I couldn't hear you until you're about, you know, I'm sure about 15 feet behind me. The question I have here is, yep. first of all, why do they get rid of the manual? I know very few people buy them nowadays because the world sucks. But the other question I have is, why this only is as the only engine? I mean, they they, they could have gone, I don't know, hybrid. They could have done hybrid turbocharger. Right, 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 right. Um, I don't know. I don't uh, make decisions with Nissan, but yeah, what but I do know, what I do know, and I'll tell you this at the end of this video, uh -huh. is the price. And I think they were very value conscious and uh -huh. very value focused. So they wanted to simplify. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, they'll get more efficient powertrain soon because this is rated at 19 combined. 17 city and about 22 highway uh, for a four-wheel drive model like this, which is not class leading at all. I mean, no. it's mid-pack. No, no, it's, it, it is mid-pack, but I mean, the power numbers are pretty good and I, I have yet to drive it. I remember you were gloating about it, saying that the other one was really good when you were driving well, it. Well, let's go for a drive. Let's go for a drive, please. Okay. Bear in mind, guys, this is all they let me do. I get to go around the block once, and then Roman throws me a biscuit, and I grab it out of the air with my mouth, and everybody's happy. I really, I would like to take this home at some point in time, show the wife and kids, see what they think. Oh, absolutely, dude. I am still thinking about new vehicles, and you have the keys, right? Yes. <laughs> I hope so. So now you have push-button start. So that's a very modern feature. Yeah, it's over here. Okay. 
and this interior is all new. One good thing about working with Andre and Roman is yep. that their leg and body type is a little different from mine, but not that much. I don't have to do too many. So let's turn the uh, AC just a hair on. Yeah, let me see here. Okay, up and, up down. and down. It does not telescope. It, it doesn't telescope. No. No. Okay, I have a few adjectives about that. Oh, okay, uh, save it to the end of the video. Mm -hmm. um, it has um, basically everything. So heated heated seats, mm -hmm. heated steering wheel, parking sensors, automatic climate control, four low, of course, right? Yeah, this is just like drive. before. Yeah. Uh, on your side over there, there is a rear locker. So it's probably hard to see there is a button on the dash. Oh, it's way down there. <laughs> so what they, dude, what they did was they moved, because they used to have that stuff over here, right? Some of it, yes. Yeah. They put everything down and there's like three steps. Uh, Alex, I don't know if you want to come over here maybe, because this is a- it, Oh, do you want to come outside? I don't think he'll be able to see it from here. Yeah. Let me open the door. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't know if I'm digging this, because I like the look of the interior, but look at this. So, blanks here, but look, down here, cargo light, hill descent, and then traction control off, and locker. Right, way down there. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not loving that. And tow mode's right here. It's good that it has a tow mode. But it doesn't have a hitch. It doesn't have a hitch, and there's no brake controller that I can see. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. All right, let's go for a drive. I let's go for a drive. drive. Yeah. The other thing it has is, of course, like wireless charging. Um, you can see this pad. Uh, the wireless charging pad right here. Yeah. Um, and then cup holders. Traditional shifter. I do like that. I don't like rotary knobs very much or push buttons. Let's see how it feels. Giant screen. You got cameras, 360 degrees. That's nice. So there you have it. And also front tire uh, cameras. Ooh, yeah, I do like that. Well, Nissan pioneered um, this stuff. I mean, they really did. Some of the earliest vehicles out there were Infinities with bird's eye view and whatnot. And it's just gotten better over the years. We'll give it some. Well, yeah, I'm gonna do that in the parking lot. Just jump, just yeah, jump. I'll the, jump uh, right over there. I'm sure Nissan will be thrilled with that. Ah, no. look at that. Look what's parked right there. I knew Tacoma, Toyota. You're always here. I need to park next to that. Um, later. Yeah. So uh, Ooh, let's get way. down the bigger street. We'll make a loop and get on the bigger yeah. street because I want you to stretch the legs. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so Actually, it does have power. It pickups pretty yeah. good. It's smooth. Now, what do you hear? That's the thing, I don't hear much. Normally I hear clanging and road noise. I don't hear a damn thing. No, it's been insulated. It's really, really quiet, quiet. Yeah. yeah. You know, this sounds as quiet in my mind as the uh, Ford um, Ranger. The Ranger. Ranger is super quiet, um, but this has a nicer interior, but I'm sure Ford's gonna fix those eventually. Here, here's one thing. What? Yeah, the door panels. What, so hard? Yeah, so, I, so well, hard, you know me. So you've, dri you've driven around the country, literally, with yes, me. Yes. And you know, one of the things I like to do is open up the uh, windows and have my arm hanging on the, the uh, door, right? Yes. Well, if it's not soft, I just I don't like it. But I'm sure a lot of fans are going to say, "Well, you know what? That means that it's easier to wash out." All right, fair enough. Uh, that doesn't really work with a premium truck. In All my right, mind. let's let open up, stretch the legs a little. It does RPM. rev high. Yeah, that's does. surprising. It does. This runs on regular fuel, right? Yeah, it does. It, okay, it, so it can. And that's the power rating that, that they gave it, uh, 310 horsepower. And, okay, so you don't have to put in premium right. to get that maximum power. So we could probably turn around on the left here and just go around and come back. You got it, but, Dad. But dude, um, thank you. Uh, but dude, you know, they give it the bigger screen so it feels more modern. The whole interior is much better looking. I will say that for sure. Yeah. And the door cards are redesigned, although they're a little bit hard, of course, like you said, on, on top. They are redesigned. This has um, also the convenience package. It has the Lux package. It has the off-road package. It has every kind of package. Um, and because of that, uh, all of the interior is kind of blacked out. Yeah, I, I get that. I, I was get hoping you would have some accents, you know, Ooh, like sunroof. there's a sunroof as well. Yeah, um, that's kind of weird because I remember in the promotional stuff that we were doing early on, they were showing different color interiors that looked really striking. 
Yeah, with um, orange. Little, little orange inserts right. and some stitching. That's still available, it's just this truck doesn't have it. It's a good training radius actually, I wasn't even trying. It. You know what? This is a common question people would get. Yeah. Um, they did not update the turning radius. Really? So it's the same as uh, the old Frontier? It's the same as the old Frontier. Well, the, the platform's the same. I mean, well, the, big the frame difference. is about the same. Right. Yeah. So, so they changed the mounting points and a whole bunch of stuff to make it smoother. Here's speaking of which, there the, is the previous the, generation right there. Yeah, there's a Frontier and it had truck nuts actually. <laughs> that was I don't think I would put little truck nuts. <laughs> um, the, all right, let's give this thing a shot. Okay, hold on. Interesting downshift there, but it was pretty quick. Wow, over 6,500 RPM. Yeah. See, and, it's still, and it's still not very loud. Um, after about 55 miles, I, I drove home last night. About 19.7 to 20, uh -huh. 20 MPG, which is in real world is not not great, but not bad either. You are able to find out what gear you're in by slapping this over. Uh -huh. I like that. Into manual mode. Yeah. But you, all you have to do is just move it over, boom, and it'll quickly tell you on the dash. Right now I'm in fourth. Yeah. And even though I'm in manual mode, I'm willing to bet you dollars to donuts it's going to do the shifting on its own. Up to yeah. fourth, maybe. No, nope, that was definitely a first gear shot, a stop. So. Yeah. Yep. So that's how you tell. So the rear seat is a little bit changed because they stretched the length of this truck just by a few inches, mm -hmm. not a lot. Uh, the wheelbases are about the same. Uh, the truck is a little bit longer. It's about the same width, mm -hmm. same height as before. Um, so they touched all the pretty much all the elements of this truck. So if I were to put this next to this truck here, which rumor has it they compete. Ooh, the Tacoma. Mm-hmm. Mm. Interesting differences I can see right away, including the way the door is shaped. Now, this is something that Ford did a lot of and does a lot of, where they One. drop the window and then lift the uh, armrest Yeah. Um, in terms of that design. You, you can, mean right here? Yeah, exactly. The visibility is a little bit better, I would say. Which which is exactly the point. The seats are better. And I think the window is larger here than it is in the Toyota. And One of the issues I've had with the Tacoma is that when I get in it, I have to duck my head and lift my butt to sit. You know, not everybody has to do that, but I do. So it's interesting. I'm very comfortable in this. I could say that the, the front seat is great. The steering wheel is great. I'm not hitting too much either because normally I spread out pretty wide. So yeah. it's not too bad. It's got the old crap handles right here. So I like a lot of this interior, but not all of it. Fair okay, enough. Not, not, not all of it. So let's park it and um, give the verdict. Is it worth the hype? I mean, after many, many years where you know, they were kind of stretching out the previous generation as well. Yeah, they right? were stretching it out? Uh, yes. <laughs> they went, are you kidding me? It's as if they exhumed the body and just kept, <laughs> you know, here's the parts, here's the parts, add new parts, sew it up, sew it up. And I have nothing against it because it was a really good truck for yes. years. Yes. But now with, you know, think about the competition. You've got the Jeep Gladiator. I think the Jeep Gladiator in many ways is forcing everybody to kind of up their game with off-roading. So I'm hoping that this thing is really good off-road. Well, it, we'll find out on yeah, our off-road channel. Exactly. Yeah. I like the steering weight a lot. This might be the best. But the fact that it's not telescoping is a little It's irritating. a little odd, yeah. I it mean, I, it, I'm okay because I, for me, I have long arms and a big belly, so I have I have good space. But I can see how some people wouldn't like this. Um, I'm curious to your point of view, too. All right, uh, let's, let's shut it down. Ver verdict. Yep. And you know what? Real quick. I'm gonna jump in the back seat behind myself just to quickly see. I know the numbers, so I know I should fit without a problem. Yeah, it feels a little bit different than the old Frontier. The headroom's actually better than I thought. The legroom's okay, and I am able to lean my back. I would say that for a big fat guy like me, being back here for more than an hour would probably be uncomfortable, but for my kids, in-laws, Piece of cake. Question, how much is this truck? Well, that's the thing. So it starts a, a four-door crew cab, four-wheel drive, uh, at about 37 okay. uh, with a Pro 4X package. But because it has all the additional stuff on it, convenience and luxury and the rest, this is 44,000 just over that, which still, I think, undercuts most of the competition when you load up the other trucks. Yeah, that is a competitive price. I'll say that. So, Nathan, here is my verdict. I've been thinking about this for a very long time, and especially since we have this new truck here uh, for, for some testing and uh, comparison. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's a very good truck. 
Uh, right, and I think uh, you might agree with me. So I would say it drives very nice and comfortably. Oh, it's, it's incredibly really, quiet. It's really quiet. Yeah. So it's very relaxing. It's a daily commuter, no problem. Yeah. Um, they've updated it. It's got good power, but I have a couple issues, mm -hmm. and this is why I think it's not worth it. Oh, okay. Um, I would say it's a great truck. The fuel efficiency could be better. Yep. The payload could be better. Oh yeah. Um, those are big things. Towing could be better. I mean, higher. Right. Well, I mean, so, it's it's not best in class with any of that, other than its horsepower, right? Yes. Um, I like the interior. I love the exterior. Uh, I the overall look and like the feel is great, but there's a lot of parts that kind of let me down. Mm. So I'm really on the uh, on the verge of saying that it's not worth the hype. However, when I look at it, everything tells me that it's cool. I love the way it looks. So just because of its looks alone, its aesthetics, I'm gonna say it's worth the hype. You love this color, don't you? I love the color. I absolutely love that color. And normally I don't really like orange trim, but it really works with this. I know some this people say red. red. Lava red. Is it lava red? Yeah, that's what they say. Okay, okay. I say lava orange. <laughs> I, I agree. There you have it, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned. We have more videos with the friends here coming. We're gonna take it off road properly in the mountains. Right. Uh, and we're not gonna go easy. Please don't go easy on it. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Coming up very soon on TFL Truck, our brand new video series for a few bucks less. Check it out. What is that? Uh, envelope. Ends for you, T's for you, and A's for you. Neat. We're calling this new series uh, for a few bucks less. This so is 2,500 bucks. Exactly. Look at it. It's a B4000. Were you living in here for a while? Look at it! It's a 1965 Peugeot 404. And the transmission is still there. Aha! Oh, I thought you bought a Peugeot. Taking that aside, everything pretty much works. Oh, I got him at the line! Come on! That's gonna be the slowest race ever done at this IMI track. But here's what I found in my truck. You found that? It's a bat. It's There's still fishing. leaking. It's a little tiny oh. bit of oil. Nathan, how do you feel against the mighty V8 right now? So guys, the question now is for a few bucks less, did you get a little less or a lot less? And there's only one way to figure that out.